Hi, I'm Taylor with Mom on the Spectrum, and today I've got a fun little bingo card for late diagnosed autistic adults. You can get your own copy through a link in the description if you want to print one out for yourself. This is just for fun. It's not a diagnostic tool. I'm not a diagnostician. I'm not a psychologist. I'm a late diagnosed autistic mom of two, and I'm here to share resources and information to help other autistic adults like me. If that sounds helpful to you, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving this video a thumbs up. And if you want to keep track of how many you relate to as we go through the bingo card, I'd love to hear your score in the comments, whatever that means. So just to be clear, even if you cross off every single thing on this bingo card, it does not necessarily mean that you are on the spectrum. I just have the privilege of getting to work with the autistic community every day. I teach classes, I hold webinars, and I'm constantly learning from others in the community from my own experiences as well. And I've just compiled this fun little bingo card so that we can connect with each other about things that we might've experienced together. So first up, People pleasing tendencies. Hello, absolutely. I think that this can kind of go hand in hand with masking. Somebody told me before that they feel like an antenna whenever they walk in the room, like they immediately pick up on other people's emotions and the energy of the room. And I think because we're we're used to, generally speaking, getting in tune with other people and what they're wanting from us, hence the masking and all of that, I think that we become pretty good at people pleasing and putting ourselves on the back burner. Second one, we're going to go straight across. Routines are sacred. That's kind of part of the autistic experience. We like our routines. Please don't mess with them. But if you're ADHD, you have ADHD too, that's where things get interesting because then routines are not so fun. Third thing on the list, trouble getting into bed. Transitions can be especially difficult for people on the spectrum. And I've heard time and time again that so many of us just get stuck like on the couch before bed because that transition going from the end of the day to the night, it's just really hard. Fourth, secret stems. So stemming is any repeated physical movement that we have that helps us move energy that gets kind of stuck in our body when our nervous system gets dysregulated. Secret stems can be things that we do discreetly so that it doesn't like upset other people. So it could be picking at our skin, our hair, our nails. A lot of people tell me they scrunch their toes in their shoe because nobody can see that. Next one is knowing more about others than yourself. This can be, again, kind of due to our people-pleasing tendencies. We might know what other people want and need before we know what we want or need. Second row, listening to the same song over and over. I'm not gonna say too much about that. Other than if that's you, let me know in the comments which song it is for you. For me, it's September by Earth, Wind & Fire. Second one on the second row, stomach issues. Unfortunately, this is very, very common with people on the spectrum. Gastrointestinal issues, dietary allergies. It's not fun but it's part of many of our experiences. Kind of related, sticking to safe foods. So if you're on the spectrum, you probably have some foods that have like safe textures that always or almost always feel good to eat. For me, it's french fries. Like sometimes I have a hard time eating things with different textures, kind of maybe related to ARFID. I have another video over avoidant restrictive food intake disorder if you're interested in learning more about that. But my safe foods are french fries and this protein bar that I've eaten like a million of because it always tastes good to me. Next one is triggered by light touch. For whatever reason, so many of us on the spectrum get very easily upset if someone lightly touches us in any way. I need firm, deep pressure or else. Last one on the second row, needing extra time to process what someone just said. Delayed processing is a very common experience for people on the spectrum. Someone told me that their first response is usually a script, like a scripted response that has become familiar and safe to them. I need space by myself to process, especially a bigger idea or something important that someone just said outside of a social situation where I can just be by myself, process the information, and then come back to the conversation. Third row, I can't hear you, the lights are too bright. If you understand what that means, X. Next one, making a list and immediately hating it. This is more related to the ADHD, autistic and ADHD combination that I mentioned earlier. I make a list and I'm so proud of it and it's beautiful and if I followed the list all my problems would be solved but then as soon as I make the list I hate it and I don't want to do anything on it could be related to demand avoidance if you're interested in learning more about that. The one in the middle, research mode. This is the one that's basically like the free space because I feel like everyone on the spectrum knows what research mode is. We just like to learn. A lot of times I like learning about random stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with my life. I'll just get fixated on the idea that like I need to understand how Bluetooth works or how to say something in a different language that I don't speak. It, like I just get fixated on these ideas and these things that I wanna research, like what's behind walls and what are the steps for making a house I don't know that 
is very interesting to me. So all of these random things that we just all of a sudden need to research and might become an expert on. The next one is sitting in your car for longer than you intended to. This again is kind of related to transitions. Transitions can be difficult for us on the spectrum. And a lot of us spend a lot of time in our car trying to figure out how to get to the next thing. The next one is that headphones make things better. So if you have a safe pair of headphones that you like putting on, when you put them on, you feel like you're in your own little world, in your own cocoon, X that one. Next row, sensitive to caffeine, alcohol, and or medication. So for me, I have to drink decaf coffee because if I have regular coffee, I'm gonna be so wired that I'm uncomfortable, even if it's like half a cup of caffeine. Alcohol, I'm a lightweight. I can tolerate hardly anything. And then medication, there are more studies coming out that are showing that autistic people can have paradoxical reactions to medications. Just food for thought. Next one is feeling what others are feeling. This is related to the antenna thing that I was talking about earlier. This is a, like a misconception about people on the spectrum that we're not empathetic. Many people on the spectrum are highly empathetic, even empathic, and oftentimes we take on the feelings of others. This happened to me, I was leading a class on dating and relationships the other day, and as soon as I started this session, I felt this overwhelming wave of grief that was co coming at me like collectively from everyone. I could feel everyone's grief, and it was so overwhelming that I had tears in my eyes. Please tell me I'm not alone in my ability to do this. Next one is wanting to be alone but feeling lonely. No explanation necessary. Next one is needing to know why for everything, very closely related to research mode. This is particularly important to understand in kids and kids going through the education system at a young age. Tell them why, help them understand why. It makes everything better. Next one is wishing other people asked good questions too. You get what I'm saying about this, right? As an autistic person and maybe related to needing to know why, I ask a lot of questions and I feel like I ask pretty darn good questions and I don't feel like it's often reciprocated back to me. Like I feel like non-autistic, allistic people, do you know how to ask questions? Sorry, that's a bit judgy, but Next, comfy clothes always. Yes, sweatshirts, sweatpants, hair in a ponytail, preferred mode. Next one is easily upset by injustice. This is like so much more than just everyone being upset by injustice, right? Nobody likes injustice. But if there's any type of injustice happening in our current situation, we can't focus on anything else until the injustice is addressed, which obviously makes the world a very difficult place to live in right now. Next one on the bottom row, why isn't everyone as blunt as me? Wouldn't that be so great if everybody would just say exactly what they were thinking? I think that would be great. I think that being clear is being kind. And I wish that other people would just be freaking blunt. Just tell me what you're thinking. I can handle it. I promise. Next one, not wanting to appropriate the term autistic. What does that mean? It means that a lot of autistic people, especially adults who have not yet been diagnosed, they feel bad for using the term autistic because they don't want to take it away from other people who need it more. Let me tell you, you're not appropriating it by using it if it helps you have more self-compassion for your own tendencies and patterns. You're not being selfish. You're not hurting other people. But this is a, a common concern that I hear a lot from the autistic community is I don't want to use the term and take it away from somebody else. You're not. If there are words you can use to better describe your experiences and help you support yourself, nurture yourself, give yourself more compassion, show up more fully in the world, please do it. And the last one, planning things perfectly and being unable to execute. So for people on the spectrum, our executive functioning can often be impacted and we might have the best intentions. We might be able to plan on every nitty gritty little detail and focus in on all of the inner workings of things that need to happen in order for something to be executed flawlessly. But then when it actually comes time to transition into doing that thing that we've planned out perfectly, a breakdown can happen. Let me hear from you in the comments. How many of these did you check off? For me, I'm pretty sure it was every single one. And I wanna mention, because we talked about headphones here, if you haven't been able to find headphones or earbuds that you like, that make things better and not worse, you can try out Flare. This is my absolute favorite brand. They don't fully close off at the base of it so that sound still gets through. It doesn't block out sounds, it doesn't make things muffled. I've tried so many earbuds where it just blocks stuff out and it. I can hear myself chewing, I can hear myself talking, I don't like it. These earbuds by Flare, particularly their calmer earbuds, I use them all the time. And what they do is it just reduces the high and low frequencies so that you're getting more of an evenly based sound 
input. That's my non-scientific way of saying it. But if you've been looking for earbuds that will help you and actually make things better, I'll put the link to these in the description. I love them. They have some without this lanyard too, but they're very tiny. So I actually kind of like the lanyard on the back so that I can keep track of them. And there's different colors, clear, purple, blue. Thanks so much for watching. As a gentle reminder, again, this bingo card is not a diagnostic tool. If you'd like more resources to help you navigate life on the spectrum, subscribe to the channel. Let me hear from you in the comments. Check out my website for more resources, momonthespectrum.life. You have an awesome brain. It deserves to be supported and well-loved, and I'm here to help you do that. See you in the next video. Bye.